we're gonna go over the truth behind triple extension and we're gonna start right now. Triple extension is one of those concepts that can sort of be like this mythical discussion. And a lot of people also believe it, it has to happen, right? So it's this discussion where a lot of diehards are, we gotta hit that triple extension. You gotta get up on the toes and extend the knees and extend the hips. And then there's another camp that might just think like, hey, it's, it's, it's a byproduct of what's happening. And so it becomes this sort of gray area in the world of weightlifting. But first we gotta go into what actually is happening, okay? So if we can think about finishing a snatch, we're gonna see the ankles fully plantar flex. We're gonna see the knees fully extended and likely going to see the hips also fully extended. And this is when triple extension will happen. It'll be at the top of a snatch. It'll be at the final extended position of a clean. And then this leads us into how do people actually coach triple extension? Is this a coachable positioning? So a lot of coaches will cue with jump at the finish. And if, if we think jump at the finish, there might be triple extension. Other coaches will say, hey, really really plantar flex, get up on those toes on the finish. And then other coaches will use sequencing of ankles, knees, hips, as though the athlete is going to be finishing with plantar flexion first, and then knee extension second, and then hip extension third. And so this creates a lot of gray areas. So we have to, as coaches, analyze, does it happen? When does it happen? What causes it to happen? And what's the best way to cue your athletes to get it to happen in case they're not doing it? So the first discussion point has to come back to, does triple extension have to happen? Are there examples of athletes who have been really, really good at weightlifting who didn't actually triple extend? And I'll bring up two individuals right away. A lot of people, when they would watch Yuri Vardanian uh, finish a lift, a lot of coaches, especially now if we look at his videos, you know, snatching 180 plus kilos, a lot of coaches would argue he doesn't entirely plantar flex. Yes, his knees are extended. Yes, his hips are certainly extended as well, but he's not fully plantar flex. There is slight plantar flexion, but that could be part of this debate that he's not plantar flexing uh, in comparison to what you might see from someone like Guo. Okay, so when Guo finishes, she's clearly much more plantar flex in comparison to Yuri Vardanian. Another athlete, Akayev. So he was known for snatching 210 kilos in training. He was a world champion, 105. He's gotten uh, retroactively popped a couple times now, but he, in some of his videos, especially of his 210 kilo snatch, he might not have fully extended his knees. And so some individuals who tend to jump a bit more or who tend to jump back a little bit more might not achieve that full knee extension because their hips extend so much, there's still a little bit of knee flexion. So there could be an argument that Akayev didn't truly achieve that full triple extension. And then the next question that I also like to bring up outside of the world of weightlifting is gonna be, do you have to coach your athletes to achieve triple extension if they're doing a snatch or a clean based movement. And is that going to carry over uh, to the world of athletics if they're playing football or basketball or whatever that sport might be? So is it about triple extension or is it more about the rate of coordination that we're looking for that's gonna transfer really well or even the, the improvement in, um, in mobility and the improvement in force absorption? Is, are these the, the main focuses that we're looking for to transfer from the weightlifting world over to the world of athletics? So piggybacking off of the, the discussion of triple extension transferring over to the world of sports performance, over to the world of athletics, I actually wanted to bring to light Al Vermeil. So Al was a, a strength and conditioning coach for the Chicago Bulls when they won all of their, their six world championship titles, when he also was a strength coach for the Chicago Bears when they won the Super Bowl in the late 80s. And he would discuss the importance of triple flexion. Okay, so actually having dorsiflexion, uh, knee flexion, and hip flexion when you would catch a clean or when you would catch a snatch. And that that position was actually more transferable to sports because it's it's the position that needs to be the strongest for athletes to be successful. Think about that position as a linebacker or if you're if you're playing basketball, it's more of a defensive position. And so Al used all of these different movements, these different uh, snatch variations and clean variations to achieve extension that would more so lead to that flexion position. And so that's one area that we also have to really consider is that if we're thinking about transfer to athletics, 
triple flexion is likely more that thing that we need to focus on. So actually catching the cleans, but how does this deal or how does this focus on triple extension? And so that perception or that analysis of triple flexion then led to me thinking deeper. Okay, so do we have to coach triple extension or is triple extension happening because of what's happening in the pull? And then do we need to achieve this triple extension to then achieve triple flexion on the catch, which I don't believe we actually have to achieve triple extension to achieve triple flexion. But let's talk deeper now about triple extension. Okay, so that first key focus I think as coaches when we're discussing now triple extension is what's the technical patterning behind this concept? And then that big question is to cue or not to cue triple extension. That's the big concept here is what's the pattern and should we cue it or should we not cue it? And this brings in a much deeper topic or, or aspect behind technical movement, uh, technical coordination in these weightlifting movements is that in most cases, technique is built around what happens in the previous position. And so thinking about triple extension, as we mentioned in the beginning of the video, that's at the finish of a snatch or the finish of a clean. But if we work backwards and we know that what happens prior to that position, prior to the finish, that's likely going to be the key. And so now we have to start to think about the triple flexion discussion that Al Vermeil, the great strength and conditioning coach from the Chicago Bulls brought in. He would discuss triple flexion on the catch. But that made me start to think about, okay, if triple extension happens, okay, it happens in most lifters. Yes, Yuri didn't really plantar flex. Yes, uh, Akayev didn't really uh, extend his knees. There's some other examples out there. But now we have to think about the priority of the position before extension happens to be where the reciprocation point is. And this is a concept that no one really truly discusses, but if we can think about as the bar comes off the floor, the knees need to clear back. Okay, so that's that first patterning. We wanna see those knees clear back. As the bar comes around the knees, we want it to be as tight to the knee as possible. That's when we will see the reciprocation point or the knees will come under the bar to keep the barbell tight to the center of mass. Okay, that has to happen to keep the bar as tight as possible to center of mass. We can't just pull the bar into our knees. We have to get our knees underneath while we're staying flat footed and while our chest stays forward. And that brings in that key concept of triple flexion. So as the bar is entering the reciprocation point and getting into the hip, so coming up now into the hip, we will see flexion, we'll see dorsiflexion in the ankle, we'll see knee flexion to get the knees under the bar. And remember, we're still achieving dorsiflexion because we're keeping those heels flat and we will see hip flexion. So we're seeing triple flexion occur prior to triple extension. And so one of the big key factors here is understanding that when the knees come forward, there's going to be a lengthening on the Achilles, right? And then as the knees also come forward, uh, there's gonna be a little bit more of a stretch on the hamstrings. The hamstrings then will uh, lead to that hip extension. And so these joints, especially the knee and the hip, they're achieving co-contractions to stabilize the knee, to stabilize the hip so that there's less noise. And that in turn leads to hip extension and knee extension. And I also believe that this is a key concept. And another little nugget here is that hip extension typically will occur prior to knee extension. I think that that happens fairly regularly with most athletes. And so the key concept here behind triple extension or the truth behind triple extension is actually understanding that triple flexion position. We need to understand that the end result, that big finish is from prior positions in the pull. We also need to understand how the reciprocation point comes into play, how the knees come underneath the bar, how we hold the heels flat, how we try to keep that chest forward as long as possible. And then finally, the most important part is understanding co-contractions in the knee, understanding co-contractions in the hip to stabilize those joints and also to achieve greater stretch reflexes, which in turn will lead to a greater, more vertical finish. So the discussion comes back to, do we need to 100% cue 
triple extension. I don't believe so. I think the key factors behind educating our lifters is that the key positions really are from the floor to the knee. If we can hold good stable positions from the floor to the knee, that's gonna set up the rest of the lift to be successful. Those prior positions are much more important to being taken care of. If, if we don't hold those earlier positions in the pull to high regard, then we won't be capable of achieving those monster finishes. And those positions all rely based around how the knees come back, how the knees come under the bar, how we're holding our heels flat, how we're keeping our chest forward for an extended period of time. And then ultimately that will lead to that triple extension finish that's more vertical. But we have to go back to this one more time. And that in reality is why we probably should not be cueing triple extension. If we're cueing triple extension, we're just putting a band-aid over the problem. We're not actually fixing the pull position. And if we fix the pull position, we can have a better finish at the top. I actually, the only time I really will cue that finish position is actually cueing the athlete to think of the finish as a flat footed jump. If they think of it as a flat footed jump, that energy gets into the bar. They still will extend their ankles. They still will plantar flex in their ankle. They still will extend their knees and their hips and they will stay very, very vertical. And in fact, there's a really good snatch variation with a flat footed snatch that teaches this. It teaches the athlete how to keep the bar extremely tight and still finish. And if you don't cue them to keep their heels down, they will extend all the way through the entire finish with a very vertical finish. This is similar to a no feet snatch. So to recap, what's the truth behind triple extension? Do you have to have it? In most cases, yes, you ha it has to be there. It will be there in most cases. Yes, there are outliers that don't do it entirely. You might see athletes that tend to not entirely plantar flex their ankle. There's also some athletes that might not extend their knees as well, but I would also argue if they're not extending their knees, then they're probably jumping back slightly and that needs to be taken care of as well. We need to understand the manipulation of the center of mass in the lifter. And that takes us back to the movement leading up to the finish is the most paramount position, okay? And that leads us into the most paramount concept here is that anything that happens prior to a position leads to the result of the next position. If we can master what happens when the bar gets from the reciprocation point into the hip and we can execute that as well as possible, that is where the cues should come into play because that will lead to triple extension, not necessarily cueing, extend all of your joints. So don't cue triple extend on the finish because everything goes back to what's happening prior to that. Sometimes with very young athletes or someone who might struggle with ankle mobility, there might be a benefit to telling them to finish super, super tall, but in all likelihood, it'll come back to those previous positions. So work ankle, knee, and hip mobility. Learn how to hold these positions. Learn how to clear the knees. Learn how to reciprocate the knees under. Learn how to hold that flat heel position for as long as possible until the torso gets vertical. And then that is how you're gonna master triple extension. So if you need help with your technique, you need help understanding weightlifting techniques so that you can achieve a better, more linear finish, you can head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up our technique course where we dive deep into all the nuances behind snatch and clean and jerk technique to help you hit those PRs. And if you wanna learn how to apply weightlifting movements to sports performance, we also have an Olympic weightlifting and sports performance book and course where we go through various sports that use weightlifting and all the different complexes and exercises that transfer best from the weight room onto their competitive field. Until next time, guys, remember, whenever you get into the gym, you always gotta cultivate your power. Peace. <laughs>